In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a radio that can play anything you want with no Bluetooth, no streaming, and, just like a real radio, cannot be skipped or paused, and is still playing, whether you're there to listen to it or not. So in a previous video, I made these radios that will play without Bluetooth or streaming, and they mimic an actual radio broadcast. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did that using this and this. Now, this is actually just a really cheap MP3 player board that I picked up off of Amazon for about six bucks. And it's absolutely perfect for what we need, which is kind of surprising for six bucks. All we need to do is to load whatever files we want it to play onto an SD card or a USB drive, pop it in here, and it automatically plays. The best part about this is that it does have some little rudimentary controls here. Buttons for play and pause and next and previous and repeat and all that. But we don't need any of those. See, in my experience with these radios, it just plays, which is fantastic. We don't actually need to get to any of these controls. If you wanted to wire up the play and pause button to external buttons, all you need to do is solder to the little contacts right there. You could do that if you wanted to, but in my experience, it just really isn't necessary. The minute you put in the SD card or the USB drive, it just plays. And when it reaches the end of its files, it just repeats. It's fantastic. It absolutely mimics a radio broadcast. The second thing we're going to use is this, which is just a little amplifier that I picked up off of Amazon for about nine bucks. This is what's going to get us the ability to have it be playing anytime, whether we're listening to it or not. The way this is going to work is we're going to wire this up so it's the on and off switch for the radio. Really all we're doing is turning the sound on and off while the MP3 player keeps playing in the background all the time. Now this works surprisingly well to mimic a radio broadcast, especially because in my experience with my radios, even if I unplug them and move them around or after say a power outage, they just pick right up where they left off and just keep going. It's fantastic. I can't believe how well this works. So now we're going to talk about how to wire these up. It's actually surprisingly easy. You only need to do a couple of small soldering points. And to be honest with you, if I can do it, you can do it. My soldering skills leave a lot to be desired. So we're going to start with this, our MP3 player. This is going to get powered with one of these, just a little five watt charging cube, the kind of thing that used to come with your phone back in the day. I'm sure you got a million of these lying around the house and a micro USB cable. That's the one that has the flat end. Plug this up to that, just like that. Now we have to run power from the MP3 player to the amplifier. This is one of the moments where we're gonna to wanna to solder. But again, if I can do it, you can do it. You can see these two connectors right here, battery positive, battery negative. These are gonna take this power and run it over to our amplifier. So this is where our soldering comes in. We need some fairly small gauge wire. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just happen to have these little off cuts for demonstration purposes. We're gonna put one wire through each hole. Just like that. So that's battery positive, battery negative. And you're going to want to solder these two points. So just a little bit of solder right there and a little bit of solder right there to secure those. Now, how to solder is actually outside the scope of this video. There's plenty of really good videos on YouTube that'll tell you how to do that. Plus, you probably don't want to learn that from me. And now we're going to run these wires. Over to our amplifier. So in this case, green was battery positive and blue was battery negative. So we're just going to do the same thing here on this little two pronged end right here. You can see battery positive, battery negative. And this thankfully does not require soldering. What you want to do for these is just unscrew these terminals with just a little flat head screwdriver and then matching negative to negative and positive to positive. You slide the wire in there just like that and then just tighten it down. There, 
and now that wire is nice and secure. Same thing with this. So now when we plug this in, the power is going to go from the MP3 player into the amplifier, which will in turn go to the speaker. Now we just want to run a 3.5 millimeter audio cable, just a normal everyday little audio cable from the MP3 player right there to the same spot on the amplifier right there. There we go. And lastly, we need a speaker. Now, what speaker you choose is up to you, but it's exactly the same as wiring the power. Positive to positive, negative to negative. If you buy a brand new speaker, you may have to solder some wires onto here, but you'll see positive and negative. Again, if I can do it, you can do it. Now, one thing we do need to talk about is whether or not you're going to have multiple speakers. This little amplifier has spots for left and right on the audio channel. Now, in small radios like this, you're only going to have one speaker, so it's only going to be mono. Whether that's going to come out through the left channel or the right channel is kind of dependent on whatever the audio source you have is. In my experience, the best way to find that out is just to stick it in one and see if it plays. If it doesn't, put it in the other one. That's what she said. And just like the power on the amplifier, all we got to do is put our wires in here and tighten this down. Now, and that's it. Now what we got to do is plug in the little five watt power charger, pop in our little SD card, and it will just start to play. This will control the volume and the power. And from there, you got your radio. Now, when you go to put this into your radio, depending on what it is and how you want it to work, you can, with a little force, pop this little knob off. This will allow you to take say, the knob from the radio and pop it directly onto that, just like that. Okay, so I thought it would be good to show you the inside of one of the radios. This is the inside of the Spiricom, so you can see how I've got all of this put together. Now, power is run off of just a little surge protector right here and these two five watt uh, little power supplies. I did go ahead and, as you can see here, let's see if I can get you a better look. I did go ahead and wire in a switch to the play and power button right here. So you can see where I soldered right here, these two contact points on either side of the play and pause button. Again, you can do that if you want. I, I really didn't find it necessary. It was just, I decided to put it there as an overabundance of caution, but it really wasn't a necessary thing to do. And in all honesty, I wouldn't bother doing it again. I didn't end up bothering to do it on the 40s radio over there. But so you can see where I soldered that. This right here is the 3.5 millimeter audio cable. And then right here on either side of the USB, right there, are these red and blue wires. These are going to the contact points. So battery positive, battery negative. And they're running all the way over here to the amplifier. So here's the 3.5 millimeter audio cable that's going from the MP3 player over to here. Here are the red and blue wires going to battery positive, battery negative. So we're running power from the MP3 player over to the amplifier. Then you see the black and green cables right here are going up. So you see them going up to the speaker right there. And you can see that I'm to connect these two knobs. I've just made a little 3D printed adapter to go through this plexiglass. That's going to be unique to my little setup here. Yours will be different. But this is how I've chosen to set up the Spiricom. And um, it works pretty nicely. Uh, you can see another power cable here. I have these, I have two of these five watt bricks because one of them is running power to this switch right here. This is completely separate from the audio. So this one has these, these two green wires are running to the green LEDs that go to this dial right here. But that's it. It's actually a really simple setup. 
Now that we've got our wiring all set up, now we need to talk about the files. Where to get them, putting them on the SD card, and whether or not you want them to play in a certain order. Because if you do, that's slightly trickier. So, to the computer. Future me will clean all this up. That's his problem. It's this way. If you're just going to go with music, the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to either use songs that you've already downloaded, or if you'd like to use things that you find on Spotify, to find them and throw them into a playlist. In this case, multiple playlists, and there's a reason for that. What I use to download from Spotify is this website here, Spotta Downloader. I'm not endorsing this website, I just did a Google search and that's what I found and it seemed to work just fine. Your mileage may vary and I am not responsible for anything that happens from you using this. Okay? Okay. We all gotta be cool about that. But it did work for me. And apparently, Spotify does allow you to download songs off of their service so long as you only download 100 or less. If you do it this way, make your playlists, and you see I've made multiples here for exactly this reason, each one of these only has 100 songs in it. What you do is you go here to share and say copy link to playlist, go back to whatever website you're using, paste the link, and hit download. Give it a minute, and you can hit the download zip, it will download all 100 songs in mp3 format. Works pretty well. Now, you will run into a slight issue putting all these songs onto an SD card, and that is the fact that the way SD cards handle file lists is not the way you might expect. So, whatever order you put them onto the card is the order they are going to stay, no matter what you try to do to them. It's just a quirk of the format of SD cards. To get around that, we're going to have to use one of two free pieces of software to put them in an order we actually want. So first, we're just going to assume that all you have is music, and all you really want it to do is basically do a random shuffled playlist. In that case, what we're going to do is go to Bulk Rename Utility, open up the folder that has all of the music you want in it, in this case, it's probably your SD card. And if we want it to be shuffled or random, go up to Actions, List, and say Apply Random Sort to Current List. This will just shuffle everything as you can see here. Now we have to make sure that all these files stay in this order. What we're going to do is make sure all of this is selected, and then go to Numbering. Make sure that box is checked, and say Mode Prefix. What this is going to do, as you can see here, is add a number at the beginning of each of these files. So we want it to say start at zero and start one. That's gonna mean the first number is one. We can also add a separator right here. And what I like to do is say space dash space. That will put the dash in between the number and the beginning of the file. Once you've done that, and you can see that it's done it exactly the way you want, we go down here, click rename, okay, and everything's done. We can now take all those files, make sure they're on the SD card, you should be good to go. Now, if for some reason you need to undo what you just did, just select everything again, make sure numbering is unchecked, go to remove, check that, and the first N number is the first number of digits here. So in our case, five will remove all these spaces. It will remove five spaces from the beginning of the file names. We do the same thing again, and we're back where we started. Now, if you don't want this playlist to be random and you want to be able to curate what the order is, you can do that with bulk file rename by simply taking each file and moving it wherever you want to move it. Once that's done, you go back to numbering, do the same numbering trick again, and you're good to go. The other one you can use is called drive sort. Drive sort, you will have to make sure all the files are on your SD card and that your SD card is in a FAT format, F-A-T. Once it is, you go here, FAT32H, this is mine, yours will be different. And as you can see, we've got all our files here. And what we're going to do is to go here to this button, hit the drop down, and make sure playlist mode is enabled. From there, we can start moving them around. And if you watch, you can see all of these numbers are changing every time I do it. So get them in whatever order we want, and then go over here and say, folder, save, and close it. At that point, 
that order will be saved onto your SD card. You can throw the SD card into your radio and you're good to go. Now, the last thing I'll say is that if you want to make sure this radio goes for as long as it can without ever really repeating that list, what you can do is use bulk rename utility to make multiple versions of the same randomized list. And what you'll do is number them, say, say you have 100 files, you'll number them one to 100, randomize them again, and say 100 to 200, randomize them again, say 300 to 400, whatever. Do that as many times as you want, take all those files and throw them onto the SD card. What doing that allows you to do is to have multiple versions of the same songs and files on the SD card without it having to overwrite it because they'll all have a different number at the beginning. You can have as many songs as your SD card will hold, and if you put enough time and effort into it, you could go days or weeks without ever hearing the same song. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video or the previous one, be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them there. Also, if you're planning on trying this, by all means, leave what kind of radio you're going to work on in the comments, because I really want to know what people are going to do with this. I hope a lot of you take up this challenge and give it a try. I know I have a couple more versions of this that I want to make. <laughs> As a kid who grew up in radio, this is just really fun for me. Anyway, if you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. You're going to want to stick around because there's a lot more projects coming in the next few months. And if you haven't seen the video where I made these radios, you should probably go check that one out too. See you in the next video.